Hej och välkommen till vår webbinarserie God Forskemorgen. Detta webbinarserie är organiserat i samarbete av Multiconsult och Hydrosen och en gång i månaden kommer en forskare från Hydrosen för att presentera sin arbete till oss i branschen. This presentation will be in English so I will continue in English. My name is Filip Patočka. I work in the hydropower section of Multiconsult and I have a pleasure to introduce Jim Abregu. He will present for us on Pelton turbines and their lifetime. If you have any questions, feel free to write them into the chat or raise your hand at the end so we will take them after the presentation and this presentation is recorded. It's yours, Jim. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for the opportunity. OK, um, I will want to talk about the uh, calculation of the life of the turbine. In this case, uh, I am working in the um, in the, new, in the Department of Energy and Process, and we are working with the uh, Pelton turbines. Um, I want to start uh, with a little bit uh, to explain about the uh, Pelton turbines exactly uh, one case to see how is the installation directly. And to remind me a little bit about the, the, the factors on the Pelton turbine. In this case, uh, I'll show you here about um, this is one hydropower plant in Peru uh, for the center of Peru, close to the Andes, is uh, Dog Canyon. Uh, the installation is inside the mountain. As uh, you can see, uh, they have like a, one, uh, two intakes and uh, one discharge. No? All the rest of the installation is inside the mountain. We have here uh, one diagram about that. Uh, we can see they have two reservoirs for uh, seasonal, uh, let's say, water, uh, two little reservoirs for daily uh, reservation of water. They have one intake, the two intakes, the sand trap, uh, this is the tunnel, the short shaft, the penstocks, and the powerhouse. And this is how it looks that the, uh, the powerhouse. No? with six units uh, and two Pelton per unit, per group. So um, the power output total of the power plant is 257 megawatts. And this is how it looks in 3D, no? just for make uh, some reference about uh, the size and the two injectors they have for each turbine. No? It's 2.4 meter uh, of diameter. And how the turbine loses its life. In this case, uh, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the work, no? the mechanism that causes the formation of solid of materials. Uh, we have uh, chemical, thermal, mechanical, and in mechanical, we have cavitation, abrasion, and erosion. Uh, cavitation, the bubbles of pit in the metallic surface, abrasion, particles passes parallel to the metallic surface, and erosion. Is when the particles impacts in the hydraulic machinery is our case of a study. So uh, when we're talking about erosion, what kind of particles we are talking about? Sediments in the river. Uh, in this case, uh, for example, this is one river, uh, Spativilca River in Peru. Uh, this is the quality of the water. You can see for the color, they have a high sediment uh, concentration and goes directly to the to the intake. Uh, what type of erosion we have with the uh, in the Pelton turbines? Usually depends on uh, factors about the size and the, the shape of the turbine, of the particle, sorry, and how they impact on the uh, on the bucket. No? In this case, for example, we have coating. Uh, this works when we have low impact angle, medium speed, and sharp edge. This is how it looks. Uh, surface fatigues when they have a little particles and they have a many uh, repetitions and the high impact angle, low speed, uh, plastic deformation with high impact angle, medium speed, and high uh, brittle fracture when they have a high impact angle, medium speed, and sharp edge. No? This is just the principle four. Uh, instead, we have more, uh, but uh, we are more focused on that uh, the progression. And how we are modeling this, uh, the turbines and how we are studied. Usually, uh, we isolate one bucket with, one, with the injector and create an imaginary light. 
and with that uh, we move in three divisions and after in two divisions. So we work with the two, uh, two divisions for uh, look how works the particles or the sediments on the water and how impact in the in the python. In this case, we have conditions. It's like um, the velocity is close to 360 kilometers per hour, and the force in the particles is close to 60 g. So the erosion depends of the of the um, shape of the particles, the distribution, and the uh, and the um, and the concentration. In this case, for example, we can see here this is the big particles. Uh, they impact directly in the center of the turbine, no? and after they follow the, the flow. So the erosion they uh, cause is this in the center. And uh, we know that the, the little particles, they go directly more to the outlet of the bucket. In this case, they have a different path and, they, uh, and the impact is more in the outlet. And the erosion they cause is more in the outlet of the bucket. And when we join uh, both particles, for sure the erosion isn't completely all the bucket. And um, this is in 2D, but uh, the real is in 3D. No, this is how it works at the real bucket. When we fix it at the bucket, uh, this is the flow. We have a different angle impact, different flows, and different direction. And this is one study about uh, how the erosion works in in different part of the bucket. Uh, we see depends of the flow uh, direction and the particles. No? And this is the different mechanism works in different part of the bucket. And this house looks the bucket after uh, erosion. But uh, this is not the end of the life of the turbine. It's just a uh, bucket uh, eroded. So uh, we have preparation after that. So for the life of the turbine, we need to know uh, all the factors that works in that. So uh, for example, here, this is a history about a Pelton runner. Uh, in one Pelton runner, they start for uh, the price of the Pelton was uh, $340,000. And the maintenance, uh, the, the first maintenance, the uh, inspection and polish was for uh, $14,000. The minor maintenance, uh, close to $50,000. And the minor maintenance after that was uh, close to $50,000. And uh, in this case, this turbine uh, works for <clears throat> close to seven years, for 14 to 21, uh, a little more for seven years. And uh, and the total maintenance, how you see, is more than $100,000. Uh, $100, so the price of, of the maintenance is another factor. And the uh, production, no? this is another turbine. Uh, you can see the production was close to 1.2 uh, gigawatts no? in his life. Uh, and we have another, uh, in this case, uh, the same. No? They have the, the cost of maintenance was $237,000. And the uh, production was for one, one, close to 1.2 gigawatts hour. And um, <coughs> this one was retired when they found like uh, the road, uh, the some crack in the road. Uh, why? Because, uh, for example, they have like a some part when it's broken, some part of the bucket, but they can repair. But uh, repair the road uh, when you find uh, some crack in the bucket in the in the is difficult because uh, they have many factors for that. So uh, we can repair that. But the problem is usually you don't have security about the safe of the turbine. Uh, we have another case, and this case is for another power plant. Uh, you can see the turbine was uh, was gone in in, in service, so uh, this uh, loss of material create a high vibration. The vibration goes through the shaft, and after the shaft, uh, they move uh, on the on the generator and destroy it all the generator. So this is one of the rigs. If we have a, uh, we repair the the cracks in the roof. But uh, this is one case, and in reality, we have many factors like type of erosion, the sediment uh, for the, the system for control, uh, for the sediment control, the predictability of erosion, the efficiency, the type of coating, the type of maintenance, the cost of location. You know, uh, after, we have the cost of preparation, maintenance, the efficiency, the efficiency strategy, and the upgrade and new efficiency. So 
these factors work for all the life of turbine. So I will try to explain a little bit about uh, some of the factors. For example, uh, one of that is the type of erosion in the turbine. It depends of, of the size of the installation. In this case, uh, uh, you can see in this picture different kinds of uh, cavitation, for example, problem of cavitation, erosion uh, directly in the middle, just peculiar erosion. So uh, we uh, uh, we make a difference about that because this is a peculiar erosion, not for the normal study we are working here. We are working with a regular erosion. When we have the normal erosion without uh, uh, without some typical uh, things of, of each power plant. And the other is the system for sediment control. In this case, um, depends uh, usually uh, uh, the, the cost of money because in this case, uh, we have a big investment uh, for for control the sediments. No, uh, but in some in some cases, I think it's necessary because the erosion is not only in the turbines. It can be in the in the in the needle, uh, in the deflectors, in the main bulb, no, in the pipes. So uh, this is the shell for the injector. So uh, the erosion can be in, uh, in other components, but in this case, it's more abrasion and difference to the erosion. But uh, still uh, depends of the evaluation, the economic evaluation. About the efficiency of the turbine, uh, we know the turbine was increased his uh, efficiency every day, every year. But uh, usually this increase of efficiency depends on the evaluation about the flow and the material. No? Uh, every time we lose more material, but the problem with that is more, uh, more difficult for maintenance. Uh, in maintenance of the power plant depends the many factors because it's not only for the, for the, the maintenance of, of plant they have the, in the power plants, it's not only for the turbine. They have a plan for all the equipment, generators, uh, the electronic parts, the, uh, the transmission line. So depends on the model completely of the power plant. And depends on the condition too of the turbine, the, con the physical condition, the edge of the turbine, the installed technology level, and the maintenance requirement, the operation restriction. And the other is the, the consideration about the sediments. No? If the power plant has high erosion, medium erosion, low erosion, uh, what is the strategy they're using for that? And um, the other point or other factor is the coating. But for talking about coating, uh, we want to talk a little bit about um, the, the history. No? Uh, we know about uh, the first uh, the first turbine was with a foundry piece by piece after when joining in a dix, no? but this kind of turbine have more problem in the in the bolts because uh, they have fatigue no? so this was a problem in this kind of turbine after we improve and we have now the foundry in what complete piece but still have a little crack inside so problem inside so the next step was uh, a completely dig uh, forged and the last part with welding and now we have the forger complete for the turbines. And after that, uh, we have the forger complete and with with um, with coating on the surface. But this coating uh, works very good in different power plants, but uh, not too good in, in another ones. No, uh, for example, this uh, this coated bucket was worked for one uh, one hundred and ten thousand tons of sediments. This order works for only 7,000, no? because it depends on many factors, the type of material, the process uses, the accessibility to the area, the sediments in the power plant. Uh, these factors now are improving the, the studies. We have a uh, removable buckets because for make a better uh, penetration in the coating process. No, uh, I think uh, this turbine is works in different parts. This is in, works in Chile, this works in, in Nepal. So, and uh, for for take out the, the bucket and make a better process of, of coating. But um, the coating is improving too. For example, in this case, this is how the the coating is uh, lost his uh, his uh, he joined with the with the, uh, the base turbine because you can see here the yellow represent the turbine and the blue the coating. 
when uh, we have a hard material and soft material joined together and the impact, they create like a crack in the middle. So these loss of material start in the middle. And uh, now we have improvement about that because uh, we have the hard material, the soft material, but uh, we added intermediate material. So create a, no a big chain, no? a little chain. So this uh, give a better attachment of the, of the coating. Okay, uh, this is for the coating, but even with the coating, the turbines need to be repaired. Uh, in this case, uh, we have, for example, all the process for, for repair the turbine, but the process depends of, of uh, the many, many steps. But the more important three is directly the welding, the grinder, and the heat trim. And uh, for each process have a lot of steps, a lot of uh, follow to, to, paths to follow. But the more important is the heat treatment. Is the, the heat treatment or, or, keep the, or keep the temperature, no? For example, in this case, you can see the, the turbine is welding in some uh, camera or chamber, no? With, uh, with, uh, for keep that temperature, for uh, make to the turbine don't lose his uh, properties, his original properties. So the temperature is so important in, in the, when we repair the turbines. And <clears throat> we can make an example here. For example, this is how it looks the turbine after erosion, after exposures of service. And this is how it looks uh, when they have after the repair process. In this case, we are using the one blade for a gas turbine. Uh, the gas turbine is the same, more or less. It's a, it's a fluid, it's a, it's a blade, no? working with that. So, uh, but if we use the new uh, new blades every time with the maintenance, instead we use a, a refurbishment uh, blades, they have a lot of improvement on that. You can see here, for example, if we change the new turbines, this is the cost of maintenance, and we use a refurbishment blade, we we have a lot of uh, say for that. No, uh, that's why the heat treatment is so important in the repair of, of the process of the turbine. The other point is how measurement the uh, erosion. Uh, we usually uh, have, uh, for example, this is the most common, the use templates and failure gauge. And the other is uh, using the calipers with templates and the electronic measurement tools. Uh, in this case, uh, sometimes uh, just like uh, some uh, cover on the bucket, just for make the repetition in the same point when we have to create attendance and the 3D scanning. But uh, the 3D scanning, of course, they, we need a reference point. And uh, the most simple is the crane scale. Uh, usually we measurement how is the loss of material. This, this is when you have a lot of erosion on the bucket. It's not necessary to make a so precisely, directly, how was the loss of material. No, and. Uh, we have another kind of uh, now using with the Mayan process no? techniques and uh, for try to predict the build erosion. But okay, all this process is offline until now. No, uh, so that's why we are working in erosion uh, predictability. For erosion predictability, we have the INC, for example, they are improving his formula every time. And uh, and the other, in this case, depends on the factors of the size, the size, the shape, the hardness, and we need to know about the instrumentation to make a better uh, measurement about the, these factors on the, on the same. So uh, this is what's the factors that influence into the life of the turbine. The other is the challenge, because we know the increase of the temperature in global. For example, in the fifth year, it was increased one degree. And that uh, this uh, causes more raining in the tropical zones and less rain in the semi-Arabic zone. But if we see the map uh, of the new of the river available for new projects, it's directly more in the tropical zone. And do you remember the the diagram of hydropower plant? They have, for example, two points of control of temperature. No, in this case, you want to require. And you can see here the increase of temperature in, in T1 was 1.5 uh, degrees every decade. And in the other point, 0.67 uh, degrees. So uh, what does it mean? One, uh, the chain of one 
uh, degrees around the world is just the average, no? Depends exactly, uh, the, it's different in different points. So in this power plant, for example, what is the, the problem with that? Uh, this is the history of the flow, the average of the flow, the last 70 years. As you can see, the last uh, 20 years, and here is the, the flow was changed a lot. They have another pattern because the climate change. And this increase, uh, this have like a more different kind of, different uh, amount of solid every year because it's difficult to predict. So they give more um, shutdowns for chain the turbine and more shutdowns for inspect the turbine for try to measurement erosion. So the measurement erosion is, is one of the important things in the hydropower plant and the methods is that can we see before. And this is the register of the chain of turbine. We have uh, six units, no? uh, each unit is a line. Uh, you can see uh, each color represents the, the chain of turbine no? and the amount of solid they, have, uh, they were in this time. So, uh, for example, in, in different years, depend because now it's a different, a little different. The turbine can be changed just one, uh, one chain for uh, per year or maybe two or three. No? And then in this case, the more difficult was one year for four times in the year. Uh, for example, the critical period was in the rainy season. They changed the turbine only in 18 years because it was totally old. Uh, the other problem now we have is the renewable energy source. Uh, this is the, the production of renewable energy in Spain, for example, for two of May. This is the production of eolic, and this is the production of solar. In solar, they have this kind of uh, pattern because depend of the of the soil, of course, and uh, in this case, it's more for the um, for the for the wine. So the problem with this kind of energy is difficult to predictable. The uh, but, uh, it's difficult to manage because uh, they don't have like a continuous production. So, uh, for example, this is the the publication about the. Uh, Kaiso, the manager of the energy in California, they show the the duke, uh, the duck cure, no, about the, the record because uh, they they you can see here the production was decreased uh, in the half day until zero because of course the production of, of solar energy was too high in the houses and distribution energy. So uh, uh, in this case, it's twenty gigawatts more or less. And you can see in one hour they they decrease the production of, of 20 gigawatts and increase 20 gigawatts. So uh, they have more problems for the for the hydro for the hydropower plant usually because they use the power plant for support this kind of, of chains. And uh, they have more start stops, more number of objectors, uh, more velocity ramp chain. So in this uh, in this table we can see, for example, this is from Peru. They have a this is the, 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 the data sheet of the power plants no? for unit. Um, uh, in Mantaro, for example, they have that the, the power installed was uh, 102 megawatts, but the maximum 103 because after the test, no? and the minimum they declared for Terry. The other important factor is the velocity run and the velocity down, and the time for uh, synchronize the turbine from zero and uh, the dam availability, how is the, the water they have resource for, for, hourly, uh, for hourly management, and the uh, maximum concentration. No? You, can, uh, you declare this to the system, and the system works with these factors. No? So, uh, for example, in this other power plant, they declare 20 for RAMA, no? 20 megawatts. So this is faster for increase the, the production. And that time for a start is only five minutes. Uh, in this case, it's only three minutes. No? So these factors depends uh, now for manage the turbine and try to supply the energy in the moment when change a lot. Of course, these have more problems for the Pelton turbines because at some point you work with some injectors only, no, and uh, the ram of velocity change. So they, they create a more factors about the fatigue load in the turbine. So uh, for the Pelton turbine life, we have uh, usually uh, some power plants have uh, only one year was the, the operation of the turbine, another more than 15 years. But the IFC, 
uh, on the board one, they say like uh, only 10 years uh, for the guide for investor. No? So, but uh, this is just an average, no a real uh, evaluation. Um, in the other hand, we have the evaluation of Morris. Uh, he say like uh, this is evaluation for reservoir. Uh, the the life of the reservoir is depends of the of the project. No, it goes to MPV zero. It's the same for turbine because uh, we need to measurement the factors works in the turbine and evaluate with paros capex with paros opex and capex what is the investigation cost the design uh, the acquisition the construction uh, the operation and planning maintenance the operation and corrective maintenance and the uh, removal of the turbine so all the improvement with all these factors we need to measurement exactly how is the life of the turbine but uh, other important fact here is the financial model because we depends on the money and the cost of the money depends on the country rex premium no? that means the cost of money is different in different countries for example uh, here in norway we have a so stable uh, country so the price of money is uh, is less no and instead in other countries with a with a more difficult uh, situation they have more uh, uh, rates in the money so the cost of money is high but if you remember the map with a with a more available for new projects in this case is directly in the in the in the places with a high uh, country risk and uh, it make if we can make one evaluation, for example, about the, the, the some investment uh, here in Norway, the return of the money is in 47 years and the return of the money in, in, in another country like Nepal is only 18 years. So uh, we can uh, evaluate the life of the turbine depends on the location, depends on the, uh, of the mechanical design, the hydraulic, the, the layout of the hydropower plant completely the consideration for the models uh, maintenance, the OPEX, if we use uh, coating, no coating, uh, uh, the kinds of operation and maintenance they have of model, the maintenance strategy, the future scenarios, you know, a measurement, everything, and even make the evaluation of the upgrade of the new efficiency. Of course, the new efficiency, be careful it about the maintenance and everything. And um, we have the different kind of life. No? And one turbine can live only 18 years. It's necessary the life in 18 years in the park. Instead, here they need to return all the investment in, in 47 years. More or less, this is the consideration we made for, uh, for, for the life of the turbine. And about our project, uh, we are working here in the lab. This is in Bankraft Laboratory. We are working with the high speed cameras to try to verify the results analysis. Uh, in that in the flow on the bucket, no, uh, to try to predictable better the erosion. This is a word to try to make in this case in uh, to the impact in one factor. But uh, this is not only uh, my work, and we are working with all the team. This is the team of the lab, all the team for the, and uh, this is not only my. I, we don't start this project. This project is going around for many years with a lot of people working here. Okay, uh, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I am available for the questions. Thank you very much, Jim. That was uh, that was really good presentation. A lot of practical examples and numbers from real life projects. So uh, we like that. I hope there will be quite a few questions. I know we have uh, a lot of mechanical engineers who are with us today. There is one question in the chat. Okay. So uh, I can read that one from Carl mm -hmm. Michael Hockstrom. Why was material fatigue not mentioned as mechanical damage mechanism affecting the life of the Pelton turbine? Each mm -hmm. time the water jets hit buckets, the runner is affected from cyclic loads that may lead to mm -hmm. failure depending on load amplitude and the number of load cycles. Exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, you're right. It's, it depends on the life cycles. Um, and even now we have more problems with a new challenge. No, I try to explain that uh, and here in this case, more or less, uh, the fatigue law is depends of that. And uh, how is the fatigue law model for the design of the turbine? For example, if we use the, the model of the Goodman no, about fatigue, 
we have we can measurement how is the load of the turbine. But usually we design the turbine for a long life, no over the curve. But with the new stress of the new chain of uh, the model of running the turbines, they change this kind of pattern. But uh, uh, it's necessary to make the evaluation about the new uh, the new force is working or the new uh, load chair because depends now of the different scenario. For example, in the in the system, they usually don't turn off the unit. They try to keep the unit running because uh, turn off means more minutes for a start, seven minutes, ten minutes. So they only put the unit in the low in the low in the minimal power output. So when it's necessary to run up, they run up quickly. So uh, start stop is some point, but more is the velocity ramp, the impact from the fatigue load. But yeah, yeah, we need to measurement that, and I think this is a good point for for the evaluation of the life of turbine. Okay, hopefully that answered Carl. Any more questions? You can as well raise your hand and uh, ask Jim Jar directly. There is one from Thais Pedersen. Are laboratory tests and or site tests or measurements included in this study or is this a desk study? Uh... We have a different part. Dif different part was a study. Uh, different part is more tech, so more uh, experience for different companies. We are joined with this, with the companies, and uh, uh, really all the case present here was a real field change. And for example, uh, let me show this part. Um, um, I can go directly with that. Um, what's here? Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Mm. Because, uh, for example, the coating was an experiment in the power plant. We make the experiment. Sorry, we made a mission. Uh, Sorry, Jim, you just have to put the present mode again so we share the slide if you want yeah. to show it to us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Let me. Uh, let's go. And this is done. Okay. Okay, better here. Sorry. Uh, okay. For example, in the evaluation of the coating, this was a test uh, made in the first laboratory made, uh, well, not laboratory, it's like a real application field, the evaluation about the coding. You know? Because uh, in these factors, we was evaluate every every process about a different process. We made a different kind of test, uh, different process, different materials, and um, yeah, in different buckets. So the same running, was running, and was was provide a different results about that. No, uh, the same for this. Uh, the coating, this this uh, layer coating was made, uh, and this was a real experiment. A real experiment. We use here a different material, different welding material, to create a different uh, different hardness attached to the surface. So, uh, yeah. So that's why I explained a little bit. And this is another word in laboratory. This was in laboratory. Uh, and this is a real case. This was uh, applied to the turbine. So, uh, and this is the real uh, efficiency, the, the real uh, safe in money about the, uh, about the maintenance. No? So, some part of uh, the work we are present here is real evaluation in film, and some part is work more like, uh, for example, uh, this is a, uh, we, we found this in the patents. Uh, office no? in USA and here in Europe about the new models and we know this is in Chile working now uh, this is in Nepal I think this is in Peru too in Oroya so uh, depends Dif uh, there's different words here for laboratory and other for more for practical tests in power plants thank you uh 
in terms of cooperation with the with the real sites, were you able to predict when there is going to be a need for new coating or or refurbishment of the runner so that the owners can plan the maintenance instead of having a breakdown and having unplanned stoppage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, the coating is, is a big problem. That no, is a big, uh, is a big topic because in real, uh, what is the problem with our coating? The, another, well, apart, apart the the factors when you make the coating, the other problem is the maintenance, because uh, you don't find easily some uh, workshop for make the repair of the coating uh, if you want to high quality in coating. And uh, usually you need to send the turbine and especially uh, a workshop. So they have a cost. So if you repair one turbine with coating, the cost is five times repair a turbine without coating. So depends of evaluation, economic evaluation, really. Some turbines prefer to work with uh, without coating because uh, because it's, it's for they is easy to manage. And instead with work with a coating because coating is more expensive. So depends on the evaluation, really. And uh, in, in turbines, when they don't have too much erosion, they can work with coating for many years. You can live for 10 years and no, uh, we don't have problem. But if you have high erosion, you need to make reparation every year. So in this case, if you have a viable workshop close to you, you can send a turbine and no problem. But if the, if the reparation of the coating is far away and so expensive, you need to make the evaluation. So it's not a solution. It's just an option. You have to work with a turbine, I think. Thank you. There is another question from Mats Bilstein. What can you say about Kaplan and Francis' lifetime based on your research? Uh, this is a good point. Usually, for example, we saw the erosion was more difficult in Pelton turbines because they have uh, they have the impact directly of the of the particles of the sediments. Instead, uh, the Francis, a Kaplan, they have a, a more abrasion instead of erosion. So they, they can uh, have more life. They have no problems about the erosion. Uh, not, not too much problem. Really, they have problems too. Depends on the turbine because I saw some power plants, they have a more than three grams per liter, 10 grams per liter, 20 grams per liter. So in this case, they have erosion, very high abrasion and after erosion and cavitation. So. But the more important thing, I think, is depend on the what type what type of maintenance you have in the turbine. So it depends on the what kind of maintenance you apply. So you try to extend the life of the turbine. So you can make more uh, inspection or you can predictable better the erosion because the erosion works. Uh, we are we are more or less uh, checking about that. The erosion works exponential. It's not like a flat or is no like a, some like is exponential. If you were, if you are, uh, your turbine was eroded at some point, uh, you can go so fast in the peak and destroy the turbine in some hours. Instead, uh, for example, when you happen and the other, the concentration of the of the solid in the rivers in the river uh, depends usually for the big rain. No. No, it's constantly, it's constantly, but in the low concentration. With the high concentration is when you have a very high rain. So if you have a very uh, hard rain, usually uh, you, you have the option to turn off the unit because you have the limit. What is your limit to manage the, the sediment? So with that, you save the turbine. So you can save the turbine uh, for, uh, for big erosion. So if you save the turbine for 10 hours, maybe it's the same erosion which you have in six months working with a low erosion, low concentration of sediment. So uh, we learned for that uh, in the Kaplan and Francis is better to, it's, it's, uh, they have more option to manage the turbine, the, to manage the erosion, the, 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 the sediment for erosion. No, so uh, I think it's the same. It's the same about the evaluation and the lifetime of the project. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? <laughs> no, it looks like you you answered everything then. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, nice. then we can say thank you very much for your presentation, Jim, once again. And uh, uh, thank you so much, Phyllis, for the invitation and uh, and everybody for to be here. Thank you, and uh, hope to see all of you next month. Okay, bye-bye.